Hey guys, it's Courtney. I'm here with another project for Trinity Stamps. Today we're going to be using some of the new products from the newest release. I'm going to start off by doing some die cutting. And I'm going to be using the mini coffee cup sleeve and decor die set. And I'm just going to go ahead and run all of these items through my Gemini. You see that we have two different size sleeves for the mini coffee cups. One that fits pretty much the entire cup and one that is more of the traditional sleeve that we see. So we're gonna do two different styles here of decorating these little coffee cups. The first one, we are going to pretty much cover the entire thing and basically make it one layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and stamp out some of the images from the Forest Friends stamp set, which is also part of the new release. Stamp this little wagon here, and I'm just gonna use some post-it note tape to mask off the bottom. I want my little pumpkins to kind of be coming out of the wagon. So I'm gonna stamp the first one right there in the center. Take another piece of the post-it note tape just because it's laying there, but you can really use any mask for this. And I'm just gonna cut this out really quickly. I'm not really worried about it being perfect, not doing any kind of ink blending. I just wanna mask off that center pumpkin so that I can stamp two pumpkins on either side of that, coming out of that little wagon. So once that was stamped out, I am gonna go ahead and add some leaves off to the side. There's little tiny leaves, all different shapes and sizes in this stamp set. And I'm just gonna kind of scatter these around as if we have some falling leaves in the background. Once all of my stamping was done, and by the way, this is 80 pound Nina Solar White, and I stamped with Blackout Ink by Ink on 3. So next we're gonna move on to the Copic coloring here. I am gonna kind of speed through this because honestly, I didn't really focus on the coloring. I'm gonna start off with some E50 markers for part of this wagon here. I saturated the paper with my lightest color on either side, just keeping a center highlight because that's the easiest for something like this. Added a little bit of that E59 on either side, flicked that color out, out with the E57, then the E55, then bringing back in that E53 for just that highlight color right there in the center. For the top and bottom portion, I'm pretty much going to do my shading the same way. I'm just going to switch up the colors a little bit. My darkest color here will be the E15. Um, no, it's not. It's the E18. Going to put that a little bit on either side. Flick that color out a little bit with that E15, then the E11, and then just keeping that center highlight for that E01, which is a pretty light color, but it blends really nicely. This combination blends really good together. Also, the center of the wheels there, I'm just going to use the same color combination, and I'm pretty much just putting shading wherever I want just to give it a little bit of contrast and a little bit of dimension. Now, for the pumpkins, I'm going to obviously color these orange, so I'm going to start off with my lightest color to get the paper saturated and map out my darkest areas. This is a round object, so your highlight will be in the center. I'm also creating a little bit of shading on or in between each one of those little sections of the pumpkin. Going in with my darkest color and just flicking out that color just a little bit, just using the tip of my marker because I wanna be able to fit all four of my colors here. And this isn't the largest image in the world, especially being we have some of it already masked out. So just extending those areas out with the two midtones, and again, keeping that center highlight for that Y01, I think it is. For the little stem, or as I call it, the handle, I'm <laughs> just going to go in with two different greens here just to add a little bit of shading, but not overly concerned with the coloring here. Color the other two pumpkins the same way, and for the leaves, I'm bringing four different colors out. I'm going to start off with a green, then go to a yellowish color, then more of an burnt orange and then finish off with a red. Once I reach the top, I'm going to go in the opposite direction just to make sure that these colors blend nicely together. I'm making sure the last number of each of these markers is either the same or maybe one off so that they'll blend nicely. Colored all of those leaves the same way and then we're going to go ahead and assemble the cup. So you can see this fits nicely around the cup. I am going to be using liquid glue here, but you can certainly use a double-sided adhesive, a very strong one, but I prefer to use liquid glue just because it gives me a couple of seconds to kind of move things around if needed. I'm gonna go ahead and glue down that one end first, 
hold that down for a couple of seconds and then wrap the rest of that around add a little bit more glue and just hold that down for a couple of seconds it doesn't take too long depending on which glue you're using once that's done we're going to move on to our sentiment and i am taking a sentiment from the autumn's autumn sentiment stamp set and I think this fits perfectly with this little theme here. I'm going to stamp this with some brown ink, and this is Simon Says Stamp Ink, onto a piece of white cardstock here that I have in my scrap bin. I'm going to cut this down into a very, very skinny little strip here. And this will actually be coming off of my little stopper that I have. I have some white twine that's just in my stash. For the sentiment strip, I am going to fishtail one end and then I'm going to use a hole punch for the one side where my twine will be coming through. So you don't want your hole to be too big because then it's going to shift around. You want it to be just slightly larger than the twine or the ribbon that you're going to be using. So next we're going to tie this up here. I am going to add my top to the or the lid to the coffee cup add that little stopper here and then i'm just going to basically wrap this around i'm going to feed my twine through that little banner type sentiment that we have there and then i'm just going to tie a ribbon around this little stopper now it would help if i had something in the coffee cup because there's not a whole lot of weight to it so it's kind of hard to hold the coffee cup and tie the ribbon so next time for the next the next cup that we're going to be decorating, I'm going to fill it first because it adds a little bit of weight and makes it a little bit easier. I just trimmed off the excess twine that I have kind of hanging off there, and that is it for the first one. Moving on to the second little cup here, I'm going to go ahead and stamp out another one of those pumpkins from that Forest Friends stamp set. And I left the coloring in here just so that you could see the color combination that I'm using but I'm pretty much coloring this the same way as far as the shading and the highlighting goes. I'm just adding a little bit of shading to the top and bottom and the little sections within the pumpkins. I want this to be more of a burnt orange type of look, more of a rustic-y feel. And it'll kind of go with the theme that I have in my mind. <laughs> we'll see if it turns out. So for the little stem, I am going to use the same two greens as I did for the first pumpkins, just adding a little bit of shading to the base of the stem and adding the highlight to the top. Not that you can really tell. You could probably go in with a solid color here. So I went ahead and cut that out, and I'm going to go ahead and put that aside. I'm using some of the pieces from the mini coffee cup sleeve and decor die set and i'm going to do some ink blending with a blending buddy brush here i am ink blending just the outer edges because you're not going to see the middles I'm using antique linen for two of them which is the largest and the smallest for the middle one i'm using tea dye and these are distress oxides but you can certainly use any inks that you have in your stash for the sleeve itself i'm going to be using the tea dye and you can see that I kind of folded that up. You have to make sure that you're holding a strip like this down pretty well because sometimes your paper can kind of bunch up. But being I'm wrapping this around my coffee cup, I'm not really too concerned about it. Now to add to that rustic-y feel, if you guys have been card making for a little bit of time, you know that distressing the edges has been a long, around a long time and sometimes we forget about this technique, but I'm taking some vintage photo and I'm just going across the edges of all of these pieces. Now if my brush slips and I happen to get some on the die cut itself and not just the edges i'll just go back in with that original color and kind of blend that out because the distress oxides kind of sit on top of the paper you have plenty of time to fix any mistakes that you may make which i happen to make a lot so i'm going to go ahead and distress the edges of the rest of these little pieces here and you can see that my brush slipped on this one too just going to add a little bit more of that tea dye ink to kind of take that away or minimize it at least so once all of my ink blending was done, or at least done for now, we're going to go ahead and assemble everything. So I am once again using my wet glue here. Keep in mind that your paper is going to be a little bit wet because of that distress oxide. So 
recommendation is to wait 15 minutes or so and let that ink dry before you try to wrap this around because the glue is not gonna dry fa as fast as it normally would, but I'm not patient. So I had to hold this for a little bit extra time. In fact, I'm holding it off to the side here while I assemble the rest. And all I'm really doing is layering all of these circles. The scallop goes on the bottom, then the stitched circle, and then the regular circle goes on top of that. Going to go ahead and use that wet glue to adhere this to my little sleeve here. And again, giving that some time to make sure that it has time for the glue to set. Use a little bit of foam tape to pop up my pumpkin right there in the center of my circle. Next, we're going to go ahead and move on to the sentiment for this one. And I'm using the little tag that comes in the die set as well. Notice I'm putting the K-cup in there to add a little bit of weight before I move on to this part. So I did wanna add a little bit of color to this, so I'm just gonna be taking some of the antique linen just to add a little color to this little tag and using that same brown ink that I used in that first cup, using another sentiment from the Autumn Sentiment stamp set. This, this one just says, thank you. I'm gonna go ahead and stamp that directly in the center of my little tag. And I have some baker's twine that kind of sort of matches the rest of the colors that I used for this little cup here. And this is, if you guys have ever used baker's twine, it kind of unravels on the ends. So sometimes I have a hard time kind of feeding that through anything I'm doing. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that Tabo Mono Multi Glue or any wet glue, and I'm just gonna kind of smear that on the edges and bring that to a point let that dry for a couple of seconds and then it won't fray and it's much easier to feed through that little tag. But I'm basically doing the same thing as I did for the first one. Just gonna kind of position that tag where I want it. I don't want this to be covering up my pumpkin. So you'll see that I'm gonna kind of mess around with that as I'm tying my ribbon. I did have a little bit easier of a time because I have just a little bit of that weight in the cup with that K-cup. Not a whole lot of weight, but it works a lot better than the first time around. <laughs> so that is it for the second cup. I will show you a quick look at both of the little cups that we made here using both styles, both of the dies that are in that mini coffee cup sleeve and decor die set. I'll leave all the supplies listed below, guys. Thanks so much for stopping by.